Oops. Radio. Okay, grade 12. Um, it's our lesson on the sectional elevation. The detailed section, which is 5.1.3, as part of your pack, it's one A3 page. And of course, uh, you'll get have to get going on that one to make sure you finish in time. Now, today's lesson is going to be quite complex, so you really need to keep up with me because the requirements of this is not as simple as it seems, and I'm going to really, really help you. Ek beloof you. Ek of you no help met hierdie snit. With this detail section, I'm going to really help you. Okay, so let's have a look at it. 5.1.3, as it is in the, uh, on page 14, it says, you have to draw a detailed section, there's two of them, drawn to scale 1 to 20, can't draw any other scale, okay? That needs to show all the detail from the foundation to the roof. All the detail. On a cutting plane that passes through the rotating door. That is in the main entrance. That is the first section. Is through the rotating door in the main entrance. Your second section is through a window. You have to do two sections. Note, you have to use brake lines to divide the detailed section into two parts. Of course, the two parts being the rotating door and the window. With a one part wide enough to show the complete rotating door and one and a half meter section of the cover drive through and the other part wide enough to show the window and the end of the roof. So two sections that you have to draw here. Okay. Now, fortunately, up to this point, you would have finished your floor plan because that was the important part here. Now, I'm going to help you here. I made a copy of what would be an example of um, your floor plan. Now, if you look at this, the first section needs to go through your front door entrance, and in a way that you see the full rotating door. Okay, you can't put it through the swinging doors because it was asked for you to take it through the rotating door. All right. Now I, um, gonna, I'm going to help you with that one. The second section needs to go through a window that's on the side somewhere. Okay. Now, in this case, I don't have an actual window here, but you can assume. Let's say, for instance. Uh, there was a wall here. I'll just draw it quite quickly. All right. And there was a window on this end here. For instance, yours might have the window somewhere else. Okay. And we'll do the hatching just in freehand quickly. Okay. All right. So this section needs to go through the door and a window. Okay, and then you can use brake lines when you draw them. So what you can do is, you're going to place your section here where you're going to see the rotating door, okay? So um, yeah, the placement here is going to be important. So let's start round about here. We do our, okay, and then we can turn to the left. Now I've, I've gone a little bit far. And there we section through the window. And of course there's a roof line going here as well. Okay. For this one, our direction, our direction of our view needs to see the rotating door. So we need to look in the direction of the arrows. Okay. For this one. And then for here, doesn't matter which way, if I look to the front or to the back, that's to see the roof overhang and the window there. Okay, so that's kind of how your cutting plane look, would look. I think you could also get away with one cutting plane here like this. Okay, and then having nothing here, and then having your another arrow here, and you'll call the one AA and the other one BB. Okay. Right, that's where your cut needs to go. It needs to go through the rotating door and through a window and a door, okay? If you have it and you can do one cut, that's one thing. Otherwise, do an AA and a BB, all right? That's what they want to see. Now, how do I get this drawn? Because if you look at your roof line, 
with your section, you have to keep in mind your roof line. This is really, really important. If you look at my roof lines here, my actual roof trusses, if, if this is the center and these are the two on the side and it continues like this, my actual roof um, trusses will lie like this. Do you agree with me? Next to each other. Okay. Okay. So if I look at the front of this building, and I'll just draw it very quickly here. In the front of this building, I'll see my um, drop-off zone. I'll have my um, Dutch cable roof. Okay, if you look at this line here, it's this line. And this part is, if you remember, I, I did a Dutch cable design previously for you, okay? And so my roof truss is actually lying like this, right, to get that shape. So it's lying in its length here, okay? But when I get to, to this, so for this cut, if I section it in line with that, that's your more traditional roof section that you've seen before. If I, if I show you here, that's what I will see at my window, okay? I'm looking in my arrows onto the roof, so I'll see that. But if I cut in this direction and my roof uh, trusses are parallel, I will actually see them cut through them. Do you see the difference between the two? I hope that makes sense to you. That's very important. So you can't have a repeat. Uh, you have to have one where you see the truss from the side and the other one, well, of course, your roof design might look completely different than mine, and you might have both of them look like this if you had a, but I'm thinking with your drop-off area, you're most likely going to have your trusses parallel to this wall. And if it's parallel to this wall, if I look at section AA, that's going to be how it comes out. So the big question is, how do we draw this? So I've taken some time, and I've actually drawn this for you. I've had quite a few kids ask me how to do this. All right. So if you look at this, we have, I'll call this one section AA and BB. This is also available on the community tab um, that you can have a look at. So AA here, start with my foundation and then my outer wall and your compact full undisturbed ground. And then I've had to increase the concrete here. Normally it's 100, I've made mine 200. The reason being, I have to embed the uh, mechanism of my rotating door. There's a mechanism that allows this to rotate. That needs to be embedded into concrete. So I had to make it bigger. And on the outside here, what do we have on the outside? We actually have our driveway, which cars are driving on. So you have to compensate for that weight also. So I just said, let me make this whole conference room uh, thicker concrete. And of course, that's up to you. You can make this, that decision. It's your design. Okay. So I made it a bit bigger. Draw my mechanism here. And there's the door, the center, and then the two doors with my outer edge. If you look at the picture here, I see my two doors, and I also see this outer, outer edges. Okay? And then on the top, we can call that the head of our rotating door. And these, um, the spacing of these lines just helps me see that it's a circular rotating door. Okay? On top of that, the lintel. And we continue with our wall. All right. I, I stopped here when I drew it and then first continued just to the right of this, the section BB. So I used the same details here, copied that across to get my section. Worked that up. The lintels, both the same height for the window and the doors. And then continued. And here you do a normal roof construction, roof end like you would, like you've done hundred times, okay, with a gutter, the fascia, overhang, your roof truss at 30 degrees, and then you cut it, all right, you don't do a full, they just want us to see the roof end, and then what I did was, it was these heights here that I copied across to get the roof design for my um, section AA. And then the spacing here is just 1.2 meters for these trusses. And what this is, that end wood there that you see is actually this wood. Then that gap there is actually what you see in here. There, I'm cutting through this rafter. 
Um, why is there three lines here? If you look at your uh, purlin, the bottom, there's three corners that I see on that purlin. Okay. And then the brand ring, I'm seeing it in its length, so I don't have to show that in, but I see the bottom of the ceiling again. Okay. And of course, if my roof is in this structure, then this isn't carrying the roof. The roof isn't being carried. It's carried by my walls on the outside, which are these ones. So it's a very, um, keep it this basic. I think this is one way of doing it. There's going to be others, of course, but at least you have an example of what is the requirements for your um, rotating door. Here's the actual door. Maybe that's a little bit clearer for you that I did in pencil. And so your height here, if you're thinking of a height from the, uh, oh, the one thing that I added here is I said um, on the community tab, you actually see that there's measurements added to those images. I actually said here, this is polished concrete. Now to have to add another layer of screed. So I specified that as polished concrete. It makes my life simpler when I'm drawing. Uh, I did the height here about 2.2 meters for the door. The height from the finish floor level to the ceiling was 2.9 meters. Um, and I said the concrete here is 200 not your traditional 100, because on the outside here, there's cars. Okay. One mistake that I corrected on the community tab is the 1.5 meter is from the external wall to here. That's 1.5 meters that they want you to draw. And you have to bring that straight up. Um, and your roof also needs to end there only. So I did that on the community um, image that I want you to have a look at. I actually extended that. Because you want to be sure you have the 1.5 meters on the outside to comply with the requirements. Okay, if you then... Yes. The duck die, the perlins. Okay, that is I die. See, daar kijk. As ek moest nou hier, kijk, moest nou hier, kijk ek vir my kop, van daar of kijk ek om aan die kant. Praat jy van hierdie, of die kant? Nee, meneer, die tafel laat daar hier wat toneer in reeds al gepraat. Ja, daar is hulle, daar hart op, en jy sien om ons nou in sy lengte, dis ook om al drie lijne is. Ok, that pearl in there, if I see from the, in this view, I'm seeing it from the end, so I'm seeing the three corners, that's why there's three corners. So, that's the beauty, if you've done the roof here, you just project that across. I mean, this roof is technically still higher, nee, but it's at that cut, yeah? that is the height at the cut. So that's why I can end it there. Okay, makes sense. So draw this first and then you project it across to get that. But have a look at that community tab. But I wanted to just show you one last, um, at your actual marks, what do we give marks for? Both parts of the section correctly, correct according to the indicated cutting plane. So we're going to see if the cutting planes line up with these views um, and then foundation slab and wall detail of both parts have we done both of them the rotating door detail and you can bank on the example that I've given you that will be correct detail one and a half meter section of a covered drive through so the covered part that's why I said extend this also to have one and a half meters please um, and then the window detail we've done roof detail including rainwater items on both parts so with this section, I don't see, uh, do I? Let's look at that cut. I'm I might have missed that, let's see. Okay, now there's not going to be rainwater that I'm going to see here. All right. And in the last, I'm sorry, there's a lot of pages. Um, title labels and notes, detailed dimensioning. Now, I haven't done these in examples, but on the community tab, I have added more. All hatching detail and the scale 1 to 20 must be correct. And then the break lines, which are these lines, to show that it continues. All right. I have one or two questions. Let me hear. Yeah, okay. Why do you only draw a section of it? When the cutting thing is 
Yeah. That's far away. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's a good question. I actually couldn't fit. I couldn't fit it in. That was one of the reasons. There wasn't light. Um, it might be very well. Otherwise, just add for yourself another brake line in there. If you're not getting all the way to the top. Okay. I don't look. I had to plan it well. This scale one to twenty. If I add a border, it's not, and I still have to add my label here. There's not a lot of space. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think for grade twelves, this is quite a complex drawing to get both of these sections right, especially this one being different than we've done previously. So I think they'll accept, they'll accept one like this. But you'll have to check with, uh, if you're watching, check with your own teacher. <laughs> All right, but that would be how I would uh, for you guys recommend it. All right. Right, that's an overview of the sexual innovations. Uh, make sure you get this done. Cheers.